So then, in this Leicester Championship meeting between Galway and Wexford at Nolan Park, it's Galway 1-9, Wexford 6 points at half time. Pete Finnerty, you know, looking at the way Wexford played in that first half, they're behind in the match, but some of the better scores were taken by them as a result of winning good possession by hard work. Yeah, they worked tirelessly and in fairness they came out with their game plan and said they're going to close Galway down and they're, they're going to man-mark Joe Kenny and put a man in front of him as well and sweep. And that's what they did and it worked, worked extremely well for them. And you could see that Wexford were at the pace of the game a lot faster than, than Galway were. Unfortunately, it, it's, it's their forward line that doesn't seem to be able to create any threat inside and you'd look and say where are the four scores going to come from in, in, in the second half for Wexford. Uh, they've worked hard at, at midfield. Banville hasn't done really much at, at full forward. You'd expect more of them after last year. And other than that, it's really Dermot Ling is the only one that's carrying the game to Galway up front. Let's, Pete, have a look at a couple of those scores that Wexford did get from Kyo and uh, Dizzy, Gizzy Ling got a, a good point as well. Yeah, young Harry Kyo has worked tirelessly at, 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 at midfield. And it's not alone. He scores a brilliant point here, but he's work off the ball and he's closing down the players and he's tireless chasing and harrying and hooking and blocking and here you see the tenaciousness here and he stays working and working until he gets the ball and, and put, puts it over the bar and that's what Wexford need, need, need more of is, is, is to create doubt in the goal we minds round to pick up the loose ball here's a magnificent catch by Ling steps inside and throws it over the bar but I think that's about the only ball that they won that dropped on the half back line every other ball was won by, by Galway and won easily it's not that it's not that they're competing for the ball at least they're competing for the ball it might be running inside mm. it might create something mm. inside for the full forward line but Galway are bringing it down on source we're in primary possession in the half back line and they're attacking from there for much of that first half Galway were relying on the point scoring of Joe Farher five from freeze in that first half and then he had to show the way to the rest of them by getting a very good point from play yeah, I mean, like that's the, the, the Galway have created some very, very good chances, easy chances, you might say, but their, their shooting has particularly been poor today. But Farah, he's, he's sat back in that pocket in front of Tony O today, and he's mopped up an awful lot of ball, and he brought Joe Canning into the game with a great little ball inside as well. So he's doing his bit, and obviously his, his free taking is, is perfect uh, today so far. So he's actually Galway are actually imposing the game that Wexford needed to impose on them. They're trying to draw out the lines, create the space in front of Joe Canning, which is working. But uh, they're, not, they're just not converting their chances from Galway's point of view. But Wexford need to reverse that trend in the second half if they're going to have any chance and open up the, the Galway backs a bit because at the moment they're totally dominant, as Pete said. Joe Canning, the, obviously Wexford, Pete said, out of the good game plan to keep him out. who kept him with quite as a church mouse for most of that first half. And yet he has a goal and a point. Now, when he got the free for the goal, most other players would say, let's take the point just before half time. Not Joe. No, not Joe. Most players would say, look, we'll win four points up. But when <coughs> Joe gets an opportunity on the 21, regardless of the five in the goal or whether there's three in the goal, he's going to be go going for a goal. And the probability is that the rebound is going to come out to a forward anyway. We'll either put it over the bar or, or score as well. But ironically, just before that, that um, free was... Or that Free was given to Galway. Mm. Um, Darren Stamp was, was fouled, and he was fouled after he played the ball, or as he was playing the ball, and it landed about 25 yards further down the field. The referee threw back the ball to where the incident happened. Um, the free taker went short and was cut out by Galway, and the long ball resulted in a free for, 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 Gal for Galway. As it turned out, it should have been thrown over the bar for Wexford, and now it's a four point difference. You know, it's just how cruel. Things Those can be are the little decision. things, Declan, that can just change a match. They are, and I, mean, I think um, young Carton, and he's, he looked a little bit uncertain under the high ball, particularly. Now he's done, he's done well, reasonably well mm. so mm. far. But that that high ball as well, I mean, I think you know he should have left that go as well. So as Pete said, instead of maybe being nine seven at the other end, you know, it, which it, it probably should have been, you're looking at all of a sudden going in six points down. So it's it's as you said, they're the little things that change change games. And Gal will be going in, having said, I'm sure John McIntyre saying, we haven't done well as in the first half, we're six points up. Open up your shoulders and, and let's hurl in the second half. You did get one a bit of a break in that first half. A Galway goal chance to Aidan Hart that just went to begging. Yeah, and they, they, hadn't, uh, they hadn't opened up the extra backs at all in the first half. I mean, Darren Stamp has been magnificent. In fairness, he, he probably did the right thing there, but he's like, you know, championship debut, I suppose. He, he just hasn't maybe warmed to the pace of the game yet. And, you know, he's on look. It, it might have actually got a deflection off um, Carton's heel there. He, he closed him down very well, but. They hadn't opened up Wexford at all. Like Keith Roster had had uh, closed down Joe Canning to the extent, and, and Stamp was so dominant that Canning had to come out. But uh, obviously they've got their goal now, and and uh, you know if they open up their shoulders, I say they could they could get a couple more in the second half. If they do, can they? Well, they have. I mean, they have the players in there. There's no doubt. And you, you know, Aidan Hart, as I said, he's made, he's making his debut. Damien Hayes hasn't really got into it yet. Joe Canning, but these guys have loads of potential, which we've seen all league. So, I mean, if they get the right ball in, especially Joe, he, he's led the way with that goal now. So, if they get the space in there, I'm sure they're, they're well capable of taking these chances. In actual fact, Pete, if you like, Galway are probably saying the same things to themselves in the dressing room. 
They, they actually probably are, yeah, with, with six points of a lead you know, half, um, at half time and not having played that well, having created maybe 11 or 12 chances or hitting 11 or 12 wides, uh, they'll be saying to themselves, look, at, if we get four or five, six points in the second half, where are Wexford going to get the 12 points to counteract it? And that's, that's where the problem is. Wexford don't, aren't playing well in the forward division at all. And it's very difficult to see, even if Galway only tag on six more points, which would be a difference of 12, where are Wexford going to get, get the 12 scores from? But at this stage, Wexford should be saying to themselves, look, at, we're alone. Un- Lucky the goal was conceded should be a point. We should only two be, be two points down. Come out and throw caution to the wind and ha- ha- have a go at them. There's really more in that forward line than, than, than we've seen so far. And like their their backs have been magnificent. In fairness to Keith Rossiter, Joe Canning had to leave him and go to centre forward try and get some ball. When he came out there, Darren Stamp cut him out completely. The last Maliki Travers was playing extremely well and they've done well in in, in defence. And Galway have only got one or two shots on goal. Okay, lads, that's the situation at half time at Nolan Park. The second half of Galway versus Wexford. Coming up shortly. More big hurting action for you live tomorrow afternoon here on RT Television. Cork and Tip in the Munster Championship. And before that, Down and Donegal in Ulster football. However, here this evening, it's Galway 1-9, Wexford 6 points in this Leinster Hurling Championship action from Kilkenny. Declan, you'd have to say Wexford probably need the first couple of points in the second half just to settle them down again now after that Galway goal. Yeah, well, it, it, I mean, the determination was there in the first half. Now they're going to have to add a little bit of quality. And, and in fairness, the forwards are really going to have to wake up as a unit and put some pressure on the Galway backs and, as you said, get the first couple of scores because that, that goal before half-time was a major setback to them. But, you know, they had been very, very competitive and why not go out in the second half and, as Pete said, express yourselves, let, let yourselves get in there and maybe, you know, grab a, grab a couple of points and all of a sudden they get it back to within a score or two. So that's what they have to do. Maybe throw on the likes of maybe Paul Morris, Tomas Mann, some of these younger, Tomas Waters, I'm not sure if he's fit, but they'll probably have to shake it up because... I think the six forwards that are there at the moment are not working as a unit and it's hard to see them turn it on the second half. So the first couple of scores, you say, absolutely vital to them. I suppose, Pete, you're inclined to look you know, at marquee players in this game, like Joe Canning and say he's having a bit of a quiet game, he's a goal and a point. Looking at some of the Wexford forwards, they just haven't sparked at all in this game yet. No, they haven't. Uh, the two Jacobs would be very disappointed. I think only, only Michael got on one ball so far. Um, and not alone that, as I said earlier, like if he was even contesting for the ball in the half-forward line and let it run inside to Banville or something, they might pick up a few they might pick up a break, they might get something in front of goal. But at the moment, we haven't even seen one save by Colm Canlon. He hasn't been asked to do, do anything in there. Peter Atkinson, I'd bring him out to the middle of the field and I'd try and crowd things out and create a little bit more space in their own forwards and create a little bit of diversion. Do something different rather than just stand 15 men to 15 and, and just take, take uh, goal with beating them. But they have to do something different rather than just... A few years ago, you remember it when he played Kilkenny, and Kilkenny were red hot favourites in the Leinster, Leinster final. Everybody yeah. expected that you were going to get, get hammered out the gate. Yeah. But you came with your game plan, you stuck to the game plan. And even though Kilkenny looked like if they were going to run out winners, it was Mick Jacob, I think, that scored a goal in the last minute to win it for you. But when you're, you're, as you said, when you come out against a superior force, you have to try something different. Mm. You know, if you keep banging your head off a brick wall, it's, you know, you're not going to get any, anywhere. So I, I just don't think Wexford have all the heart and determination that they showed. They just, just haven't seemed to have brought anything to, to the, to the uh, table in terms of a game plan. And as you said, they have to try something different. Hopefully they have a plan B in, in their locker, but it remains to be seen. Well, Jack and Wexford are back out on the field. There are no changes to the team, so obviously they're staying with things as the way they are for the moment. Well, maybe for the first five or, five or ten minutes max, but if after that time they haven't got a couple of scores and they haven't upped themselves as a unit, definitely change will have to be made. And I wouldn't mind throwing two or three lads on in that forward line. Yeah, and why not have a crack at it? Because, as I said, you want to get as close as you can to go, as quickly as you can, and if not, build for the, build for the qualifiers, you know. Difficult, I suppose, looking at the Galway forward line, Pete, to kind of really make a full judgment of them because they've been playing, playing very deep at times. Like there didn't seem to be any Galway forward at all in there. No, and they'll probably play maybe deeper at this because they're playing yeah. against a little, a little breeze in the second half, and mm. they'll pull out their half forward line e- even further and try and get one on ones with, with Galway. But if you look at the Galway forward line and say who has performed in the first half, uh, he's not there at the moment. Um, Damien Hayes got one or two balls. Uh, Eden Hart got an opportunity or two, didn't take them. Joe Canning has won one. Um, Cyril Donnell's been marked out of its centre, centre ba- forward. Andy Smith and Joe Cantley haven't, haven't really been in it. So they have a lot to do as well. But you'd say there's more potential there in Galway and when they do get a ball around the square they'll be thinking about one thing and that's, that's going for goal. Banville hasn't been able to hold the ball in the, in the full forward position because it hasn't come into it because Galway half-back line has, has cut it out. All right, lads. Well, as you can see, Wexford are out for a couple of minutes. Galway are back out. There's Joe Kenny, who was that goal from the free and a point from the first half. Let's see what happens in the second half. Time to hand back to the commentary box again to hear from Joe Canning and Don Logrady. Welcome back to Nolan Park, Michael. And uh, no changes that we can see so far. 
Well, this is one man that uh, Wexford would love to have. Damien Fitzhenry played 56 times in the championship, even scored five goals and three points.